Hi, welcome back. Um, it's a bit of a oddball one this one, so obviously I'm showing you the uh, low rider. We've not really got much further with that, um, but uh, I'm going to do the citric acid bath today. Um, I've got well, I'll give you a bit of a, a show around the uh, the shack as well. So obviously we've got that build going on. Um, on the floor there, we've got parts of the uh, rally chopper build, which is uh, stalled at the moment uh, just due to the weather. Um, the annoying sound, besides my voice, is actually the diesel heater. So uh, down there we've got the diesel heater kicking away. We start off at 2 degrees, we're now at a sunny 17, so it's almost tropical. Um, you'll also see quite a few lowriders uh, sat there waiting for their turn. Um, there's a couple I've already sold, but I need to uh, do them in the background. Just there, you can just see the... Uh, the uh, Mobo chopper um, frame which I've still yet to work on so today what I've done is I've put a some uh, warm water and some citric acid powder, citric acid powder in the inner tub and then we've got a number of parts varying degrees um, as you can see they're quite rusty I haven't yet got a tub big enough to put them in fully um, I did order one but it came and it was uh, the rot, it wasn't as stated the size, so I've still got to go back and, and sort that out. So, two rims. I'm going to try, like I say, to dip these and see how they come up rather than having to strip them down totally. So, um, rough time now is 1 pm. Um, so, we'll drop them in. As I say, they don't fit quite, but uh, we can get about a third of them. So, all I have to do is I just have to rotate. So, the water level is about there. So all I'll do is I'll just come and rotate them after 12 hours um, and do. So we'll see if we can get both those rims in. Yep, they've gone in. That's the two rims. We've also got quite a rusty, um, it's a chain guard stay off the Mobo. We'll drop that in. Um, pedal, pedal and crank off the Mobo cruiser as well. Uh, well, that was the pedal and the crank, and then we've got the sprocket and crank. You can smell um, the, uh, the citric acid powder or the citric acid mix. So that's gone in there as well. I don't think we're going to get the handlebars in on this uh, this dip. But what I'll do is just see if we can get this, because this is quite crusty. This is the uh, chain guard. So what I'll do is I'll probably just get half in there. And then um, when the wheels have finished, I'll just try and submerse it while I'm waiting for my new uh, new tub to arrive. So I've got nearly half that in there. So like I say, it's 1pm. Um, I'll revisit it tomorrow, same sort of time. And we'll have a look and we'll do a rotate. So let's move on to the next project. So I've also made a small cup for the, or a little holder for all the nuts and bolts. So all I did was, it's just a, an aerosol cap, very simple. Um, I warmed up um, an old bike spoke and punched a load of little holes in the bottom as you can see. So then as it goes in, water comes through, um, but it doesn't drop any of the nuts and bolts. So basically, I've got a selection of uh, bits here to put in. All odds and bits, screws that have just got a little bit of rust on. Easy to clean by dipping them. So I've got that in there. And all I'm going to do is try and find some space and then as I drop that in it's filling with water that drops to the bottom and then the same again when I lift it out all the water is draining out the bottom like a, it's like a sieve, a little miniature sieve so I can shape that so that's just a cheap, well zero cost a little basket for the bit so put that in there and we'll continue to leave that to soak and uh, bring it back in a bit so uh, just thought I'd give you another a bit of an update on a different area so I've got three bikes here that I picked up uh, yesterday um, various ages I think one of them's got quite a cool story it's in quite a rough shape the bike at the back um, but uh, the woman that owned that or they came into the place where I bought them from uh, she used to have that as a child and she, she was 86 when uh, when they collected it so and she used to ride it to school so we're talking probably 80 years so I'm to 1940s 1950s bike so uh, yeah quite a lot to do on them but um, we'll, we'll have a look at them this front one is, a, is called Phillips 
So I've got to do some research on that. It's got a three speed Sturmey um, rear hub on it, as you can see in there. The, it's also got the generator lights on. Um, so, yeah, it's uh, going to should do some good stuff with it. Uh, the red one, not really looked into it, it's been re sprayed. So, I've not really started doing any investigation. There's a it's, oh, here we go, there's a badge there. So it's made in England. It says, I don't know if you can see that. It says uh, Coventry, Coventry Eagle is, is what that bike is. So that's another one I can uh, start looking. I think it says Coventry anyway. I'll have to have a look at that a little bit better. Um, it looks like originally that's just a badge. So hopefully this paint should all come off um, and we can see what kind of what the actual bike colour was underneath yeah that's a good bit of a find there we've got a brand for that one um, the other one the blue one doesn't have anything it's once again it's been repainted in the past it doesn't have any uh, remains of a badge on there but it's, it's quite a nice frame so you've got butted you know the steel the inserts there quite decorative um, so yeah interested to, to learn a bit more about those they all need tires and tubes etc the blue this Phillips one needs a seat post and seat um, and they all need as I say a lot of work but uh, just a bit of something different a bit of interest I probably won't do much on a video wise unless you guys comment below and say you want to see something but uh, you know I think I'll just kind of Turn them around, get them roadworthy, and then sell them on. Um, we'll be able to fund some either workshop improvements or another project for the uh, for the shack. Okay, let's get back. All right, it's 24 hours later. Um, just pull these out and have a look. Let's see what we've got. Um, it's supposed to be one-handed, so apologies. So the wheels, obviously, as I said uh, yesterday, struggling. At the minute, just to with the container size, just due to the fact that one that was sent was incorrect, so it's a bit of a bodge having to dip them and turn them. But to uh, lift that one out, yeah, good, that's good. So you can see there's still a little bit of surface on there, um, but I'll just have a see if I can do this one handed. I've got a toothbrush, old toothbrush, um, and then. Usually, it's kind of going between the spokes. It's fetching off a lot of the loose stuff in there. So a bit of a before and after. So this is this is obviously after it's been in the dip, and you can see the the line. So that wasn't in the water. That's just I don't think that was in the water. No, that's just as as I've took it out, the water sloshed. So you've got before, and then. The after so yeah so i think what we'll do is we'll uh, we'll take it out for now get all the other parts out and inspect them and then what i'll do is i'll drop the wheels back in and do the next third so right around there yeah, and then we'll pop that back in for another day so we've got another one so this is sort of what i'm saying with the rust so it's still there but if we just give it a bit of a, a brush You can see it's most of the things a bit there. In fact, even that with my fingernail, that's gone. Pick it. Oops, sorry about that. This is probably a better upside. So, oops. I really need to get that set up properly. So, this is probably better. So, you can see just here you've got rust around there. Quick go with a toothbrush, dip it, and once again, yeah, it's come up really well. So there's your before, and then you can see on that just there is the after. Um, so yeah, very happy with that. That's going to be my new way forward with the wheels. A lot less time consuming. As long as the wheels aren't pitted, it's very, it's good. 
and if you've got severe pitting on them then whether it's worth doing but yeah that's uh, that's a good result so be a couple more dips on that obviously to get all the way around but overall very happy with that the guard wasn't expecting great things with this but you can see a clear difference so that's this side here the light's not helping me you can see a distinct line there I mean, I've not even brushed that yet, so let's see what we get with that. Okay. You, see, I don't know if you can see that on the camera, but even now, even with that, I can see that the uh, it's turning the water's turning brown where the rust is coming off. I'll tell you what I'll do, rather than fighting it with one hand, I'll, uh, I'll do it and I'll bring it back. I think this demonstrates it a lot better than the wheel, so you can see because the, it didn't go all the way in the tub, you've got a line just there and then across there, so that half was in the uh, acid, so yeah, it's come up. It was never going to come up great, but um, it's actually come up better than I thought, it's took a lot of the rust off um, this side, at least we've got some metal on it looks a lot better once again a very clear distinct line there so what we'll do is we'll get the second half in the tub um, and do it and what i might try doing then is although it might have been chrome plated before is i think i might try and get it on the metal polisher and see if i can just bring it up a little bit here we've got the uh the chain guard support of the uh, mobo bike so what i've done is i've just brushed this side um, and not done that side yet, but you can see quite a difference. I'm trying to get the, stop the light reflecting, but you can see quite a difference on before and afters on them. So yeah, I think this, as you can see, I've not used, uh, only used it a couple of times recently. Something I've not used historically, but it's, it's definitely the way forward for me. I think what I need to make sure I'm doing is degreasing the items first. Because what I'm finding is, if the item's got grease caked on it, like the crank and that, the acid doesn't go behind it. So you end up with patchiness, which is a good idea if I want to protect some parts, I can probably smear them in the grease, um, but not great if I want to clear all of it. So what I'll do is I'll finish that off um, and then we'll move on to something else. Bit of an update then. So last time you saw me I was rotating the wheels out and having to do them a third at a time until I get a better container. So I'm just trying to get this so you can see it a bit better. So now we've done, obviously it took me three days turn them um, so we need to get a bit better than that um, with the new container we'll be able to do them in a one one dip so over 24 hours but um, you can see now the difference on them um, the, the, the good uh, I'm very happy with that result uh, so that's one of them got a couple of other bits still soaking in there the chain guard was quite big so that took a that's taken quite a few attempts to get it done Plus with the handlebars as well and when the tub was full I was struggling for space so what I'll do is I'll just show you the other wheel first so once again quite happy with the chrome work I've got to just polish them up because as the water is dry it's just left some sort of staining on it but it's that is just staining it's uh, it's not bad right around there you can see where it looks rusty it's not it's just water staining um, done a set of pedals as well so they've come up well uh, all the rust has gone on there. What I'll do is I'll just get the chain guard out. And in fact, just give me a second. I just need to grab a, a brush. Bear with. Just a toothbrush. So you can see, so as it's been left out, it's, gone, it's got rust coloration on it, but that does come off as soon as you get the brush off. Um, I've even done it with some wire wool and it just comes off again. So, I'm going to see if I can put you somewhere a bit better on a better stand so you can see while I'm doing it. So, just give me a second, I'll bring you back. Alright, so let's have a look. So this is what I've done before. You can see there's the, the lines on it. This is what's been in overnight. So, hopefully, you can see the rust is sort of some brushing it, it's coming off. It's 
It's not damaging the sticker either, which is good, I don't think. So once again, quite happy with that. It's not fantastic, it's not you know like new, but uh, what I'll do is I'm going to put a bit of metal polish on there um, and try and bring that up a bit better. But to be honest, from where it was to what it is now, 100% better. Um, and it's going to make it look just better on the bike, it's not going to be all rusty. So we'll just put that to one side. Pump the bars, see what happens with those. So again, compared to what they went in like, I mean they were going to get them 100%, but um, it took all the rust out of it, a lot of the rust out. Um, it's made them presentable, let's say. Um, makes it there's a little bit of shine on. So I think once again, what I'm going to do now is put them in some detergent to get rid of any acid because that'll neutralise it. Um, you'll see there as well. That's the the grip before I did anything with it, and then they've come up quite well as well. The original grips back to the original red. So once again, quite happy with that overall. So a short time ago you saw me putting the wheels, the tyres on these wheels, so these are now done. Um, the tyres are original lowrider uh, stamped ones. This bike when I got it was, uh, it just got plain white walls. I probably use them on a rat bike I think, but uh, I think I'm trying to get it back to all bikes, back to as original as possible. So it's got proper wheels and tyres on. Same with the front, uh, stamped uh, tyres on. So I think they're quite good. Compared to where this bike was when we bought it, when I bought it as a basket case, it's come a long way. So I've got a set of fenders, front and rears, which are fairly good condition. So what I'll do is I'll drop them on now. Uh, we'll get the wheels and tyres on, and that pretty much wraps this build up then, uh, the chain on. So I think we can complete this in the next 10-15 minutes. So I'll get on with it, and then we can wrap this video up. What I'll probably do is I'll just high speed through this now. Um, you've seen me build many of these before, so I just want to get this really done and just give you a, sh a few pictures of it when it's finished. So I'll uh, less talking, more work, and we'll do some high speed. Right, so the front end is all done, um, that's complete. What I'm going to do now is turn the bike round, we'll get the chain on, set the rear wheel up and get the chain guard on. Then I've just noticed that the handlebar grips um, are pretty bad, so I'll probably cut them off and replace with some originals or one of the upgrade sets. So yeah, let's carry on again. Make sure you guys can see. So the original chain, uh, which is still very good. I think I dipped that. Um, hopefully you can see. That's come up quite well. Dipped it and oiled it. So that's good to go. There's no, I've checked the wear on it as well. That's good. got the standard split, chain, uh, split link chain so you have I'll show you you have basically a pinned end there then like a collar which goes on 
and then you drop it and then a locking pin. So when we put that on then a pair of pliers to squeeze it. Get it wide enough and then that should lock it on. That's it, that's on. That works. Yep. Chain guard on, two screws, one behind the front crank. As you may have heard me say before, the back one has a elongated hole going uh, front to back, back to front, whichever way you want, and that sets the uh, the position that way, you know horizontally, and then behind the crank, um, it's top to bottom, so that sets the vertical position. Catch. Nope. That, apart from the handlebar grips, which I'll do in a moment, is it. So what I'll do is change them over, get it down on the floor, um, and then take a few pictures before and after pictures and see where we've come. So yeah, we've come quite a long way with this. If you've watched the uh, first episode, um, you'll see what it looked like. If not, there's a link up the top there. Um, and then yeah, so really happy. It's going to make somebody a nice cheap project bike if they want to take it to the next level or just ride as is. It's very presentable. It's not a show winner, but it's a very presentable bike. So I think that'll wrap it up for now. Um, next thing I'll do is, as I said, I just had some photos at the end, but I'd like to thank you for being with me um, and join me for the next one where we'll be doing the Mobo bike. Um, I'll be probably doing a bit more on that. And the weather's starting to warm up a little now. So we should be able to get some paint onto that um, hedge fine chopper. So once again, thanks for joining while I've been doing the spanner in and I'll see you next time.